do my snowmen, and uh, there's a thousand ways to make them. There's no right way or wrong way. Uh, just like with the with the trees, everybody has their own individual style. I have uh, kind of changed it down to four different sizes. Um, these are the sizes I use that uh, list the stock that I start with, depending on what I get in the way of uh, 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 birch stock. Most of, them, most of them I make with birch. Uh, I do have some with other, other woods, but birch is the ones that seem to be popular. Uh, and I do it in a production mode. I'll go to a, the bandsaw with a, the tree, and I'll uh, debranch de it and then cut it. And if you've done work on a bandsaw with round stock, you know it's probably the most dangerous thing you'll do on a bandsaw. It requires attention, a strong grip, or a cradle. These are some in process ones. This is a finished one. I was wondering about the hat. I know. They're separate. Yes, the hats are separate. I started making them uh, all in one piece, and it turned out to be a real job painting them. Painting one was was the real problem. Putting putting black paint and keeping it off the face of the uh, of the uh, snowman. So I decided to solve that problem by making it in two pieces. Uh, it's a production job. I start out with with the log. I cut it to length, depending on what diameter I have. And I'll go through and I'll use a, a center finder and I'll uh, go through a log of 12 pieces, locate my center on each one quickly. It, uh, then I'll throw it between centers and where's my spur drive? Well, I'll use Bill's spur drive. I use a French bedan. And I start. And I put a tenon on. Twelve pieces. And Bill left his handy dandy gauge here. Just rough in the tenons on 12 pieces. And the reason I, it's obvious when you're doing production, you want to do 12 of one thing before you waste your time trying to change change sizes or change setups. I always get my tailstock in place before I tighten my chuck. And then, because this is production, I use a template, and I set up a template based on my drawing for whatever size I'm working on. I have the top right here. I have the neck right here, and I have the base, right there, I'll give myself some clearance, and that's roughly the shape of the base. The head is going to be, while it's still in the chuck, 
I'm going to drill it out. Uh, he doesn't, I don't have a cone center. On these, I don't care about pith because I'm going to be, um, except if it's really bad on the bottom. Uh, because I switched over to a, uh, by the way, I'll, I'll do six to this stage. And then I'll pull the, the uh, live center out. I'll put the drill in. And I'll drill fairly deep. The further I drill down, the more stress I'm relieving on the piece. And I'll drill them all up while I'm set up. Then I'll pull this out and throw the cone center in. I'll shape the snowman. The head is going to be quite a bit smaller than the There's a tendency to want to go straight in, and you really want to kind of round your way into it so that the the snowman has a bit of roundness to it, both from the head and the It is nice to learn to turn ambidextrous so that you can turn left or right. If you're new to turning, start from the beginning to learn to turn ambidextrous. If you're an old hat, then return, relearn, because it really is helpful to be able to turn on both sides. Look at this neck, it's a bit smaller. And I'm going to switch over to a smaller, I don't know why I'm using a bowl gouge rather than a spindle gouge, but I am. Uh, for me, it's just a matter of habit. I use this bowl gouge here so I get a nice round neck. The only thing I'm concerned about when I'm done is having tool marks. I want to get rid of any place where, where there's a tool mark. And I might make this head just a little bit smaller. It'll be a little cuter. The uh, women who buy these things say, oh, that's cute, if it's got a slightly smaller head.
And if I'm not particularly happy with my finish on it, I'm going to come down to a flat, a flat head here for the, where the hat sits on it. So for that, I'm just going to cut right in here at about three quarters of the head. It's going to be flat. And sometimes I'll cheat and I'll switch over to a, a 220 tool bit. Anybody have a 220 turning gauge? 220 turning gauge is this one right here. Actually, that's a 180 or 120. And I'll just run right through the grits real quick because you all love to watch people sand. It's the best part of the steel, isn't it? Watching people sand. And you see, I got myself a, a tool mark there. Probably don't need a close-up of sanding, do we? Don't, not some good on the lens. I don't know if you noticed that, but I got myself a, a tool mark in there, a sanding grit mark that wasn't going to come out. I go through this step rather quickly on all of them and I'll bring it right up all the way to, believe it or not, 2000 grit. Uh, Bill, do you have an air hose? The reason I want the air hose is that was 400 grit now we're at 600 grit. I don't take it off the lathe until it's done at this point. This is this one setup and Now the piece to resistance. So what do you use in there? Aha. Uh -huh. This is the secret magic sauce. That's an old t-shirt soaked in carnauba wax. Put it in a saucepan, melt the carnauba wax beads, and then throw the uh, t-shirt in there and melt it. Turn the speed up a bit. And now you have melted wax Can be rough on the fingers if you're not careful with the pads. Now that piece is ready for painting because if you try to paint it without a finish on it, the paint is going to run into that wax uh, when you put the face on it. It'll smudge all over the place unless it's waxed properly. What do you use for paint? They're paint, little paint pens. Yeah, they're artist pens, uh, ballpoint pens. No, not ballpoint, felt tip, felt tip pens. Like a Sharpie only, uh, a micro, a micro fine point. Now at this point here, so I'm going to cut this off. I'm going to use Bill's fine tool here. Don't happen to have a skinnier one, do you, Bill? I'm putting a little bit of a chamfer on this hole that's been drilled. 
Now I'm going to come over and I'm going to undercut. Aha! Yes, that's what I want. I'm going to undercut this. So that it will fit. Nice and flat on the surface. And if I go slow enough and take a fine enough cut and give it support, it's just a very, very small pit at the end, which will come off real easy with the sandpaper. But it should fit flat on the surface. And I'll do that for a lot. Yesterday afternoon I made oh, probably 20 of these things at one time, a uh, smaller chuck. Uh, these I didn't, haven't sanded yet, but these I need to sand up and wax and cut the, uh, the ends off. But that's the simple process of making the body. Not much to it, not much skill. Um, and the hats are slightly different. Again, I'll start with a pile of wood. So, so do you glue the hats in naturally or not? I do. I, uh, <coughs> I paint the hats. I get them... Uh, about three coats and three, three coats of the black three coats of the black and if I find that the black is exposing some too much grain or too much pith I have a solution to that too you may want to get a close-up of that <laughs> I use Timbermate. It dries quick. It dries fairly hard. It's fairly soft, but it's great if, if I have a hat that has a real rough surface on it or a pith. I'll just rub some Timbermate on it, rub it off with my hand, and uh, fill the grain in. And it never shows up after it's been sanded and now I can paint that and it'll paint up as a nice smooth surface. I'll also put these into my uh, chuck. Uh, I have, uh, I'll put this into my headstock and I can hold these after the glue is dry and I can sand that nice and smooth so I get a nice flat hat. But, in the meantime, I need to make a hat. So, I'll make a sample of how I make the hats. Uh, I'm going to cut that down to a smooth surface somewhere here. I have a skew. Believe it or not, I do want a skew. Unlike Bill, I use a skew occasionally. That gives me a nice surface across. Uh, that would be the top of your hat? That's the bottom of the hat. The bottom of the hat. That's the I bottom knew. of the hat. You knew that. Of course, because you know I'm going to drill that out. Uh, inch and a half. My hat is going to be inch and a half diameter. I'm just going to clean this up just a little bit.
don't want to change the diameter much, but I want to put a slight bevel on that. I'm going to go in about 330 seconds. And I'm going to be about seven eighths tall. That's about seven eighths tall. And I'm going to use my bedan to bring this down to three quarter inch diameter. And I want to measure it three quarter, but I don't know to take the time to measure it. So three quarters of an inch right there. And my overall height again is seven eighths. give myself just a little bit more clearance there and I'm going to thin this down just a little bit with a careful slow cut so that I don't raise too much grain and then I know the angle of my if I go in there and scrape with my That gives me my stove pipe. And before I cut that all the way through, Of course it's going to break off, I hope anyway, maybe not. So that's the hole for my quarter inch pin. And it's a 17 64th hole, 64th more than I need. I'm going to cut a small chamfer right there, and another one right here. I'm going to cut this thing off flat 
and I'll have to sand it. Aha! I uh, I blew it. I drilled the hole too deep, which was a mistake. Uh, it happens <laughs> occasionally when I left too much. So, you know, you know, the hole came out the top. Yeah. The hole came all the way through. I wanted it to go through most of it, but not all the way. Most of it so to eliminate any cracking. If it's hollow, it'll give it some room for uh, to breathe. But I've got a fairly smooth surface underneath, a quite smooth surface on the brim, and I'll make at least one more on this same setup. This time, I won't drill so deep. I did my, I made some, the first year I made these, I made them all with the, the top as part of the, of the head. And as I said, it was a terrible job trying to paint them. And uh, I couldn't, I couldn't keep the paint. Off of the uh, off of the face, it's just too much work to try to get the the paint off, and so uh, it was real easy to take. Uh, in fact, there's a plastic. Oh, here they are, right here. Uh, I just take again a small bandsaw, cut these things up four at a time. I grab them in my, in the uh, jaws of my drill, and run them against my belt sander, to take to to knock the corners off, because you won't get them in, without cracking the wood if you don't knock the corners off, and uh, it works so easy, to just make them out of probably 30 of them in here. I'll make 30 at a time, and. Uh, it makes it easy. Hmm? Not the air hose. The air hose. So that's three quarters of an inch on the top. Bit of a chamfer. A finish cut. And then an angled scraping cut. These require a bit of sanding, but not nearly as much because I'm using a flat black paint that covers up a lot of sins. Uh, I tried a gloss and a semi-gloss, and none of them gave me the appearance that I wanted, so I stuck with the flat black. Aha! Sometimes that happens too. When you're cutting off, particularly with some of this natural wood, you end up pulling a pip out of it. Uh, pull, the, uh, pull the grain out of it. Pull the grain out. Well, this stuff here. No, just use Bill's tools. You'd be all right. No, that's mine. I was careful to use my own this time, but the next time I'll use Bill's. Yeah, yeah Bill won't mind. You won't know, except it's on the video. <laughs> so that one, and by the way, trying to paint these things 
without a pin glued into it is nearly impossible. Ask my wife, she'll tell you, because she's the painter. Uh, so she had no way of holding it. I said, so how about if I put a peg in it? And that's a finished hat. I found this is faster, so much faster than trying to turn a quarter inch dial as part of the hat. Yeah, it, yeah it's just a matter of time. I mean, I, I only get 30 bucks for these things. I don't want to spend two hours making them because my time is so valuable. <laughs> So that's my simple process, but I do them 12 at a time. As you can see some from the pictures, uh, I set up my bench and I just make a bunch and I'll, I'll, I'll cut the wood, I'll sort it by size into whether it's gonna be a small, medium, or large, and I'll make hats accordingly. Sorry, I forgot the, uh, the mustard. Toothpicks. Cutters and aha, uh -huh, the right color for a carrot nose is alcohol based marker from Artist Loft. It's a Y14 amber. Uh, I just put a couple of coats of this. like so on the toothpick, cut them to length, and I have a, uh, let's see, I use a square toothpick because I find that it fits better in a hole, a number 44 drill, three quarters of an inch deep into the head, like right there, and then Just, that's the magic sauce. And of course the painting of the smile and the eyes, uh, that's all part of the, of the, uh, the game. Ah, I didn't talk about the arms, also part of it. I'll look at this thing, look at the shape, see where I want the belly to be. And then I'll go in with a sharp awl, punch some holes for the nose and the two arms. And I use an electric, uh, a battery operated hand drill or a small electric drill. I'll drill a number 44, was it? Number 44 drill for the nose. And then I have a table that I'll lay out all of my branches for my arms. Uh, I'll sort them all out by size. I'll pair them up different sizes. A great big one might take bigger arms. A smaller one will take smaller arms. I'll pair them up. And then I'll look at the size of the arm and I'll run it through this gauge. I'll say, ha ha, I need a number 11 drill to drill that hole. Hopefully I'll pair them up in pairs, so I'll take a number 11 drill. I have a set of 60 or so drills in a rack, and I'll just measure the drill, poke them in with a little bit of uh, tight bond two. I use tight bond two on the nose also. I use tight bond two on on the pegs for the uh, for the hats, and yeah, it's a little bit time consuming. But and so, does anybody complain about the hundred and fifty dollar price tag that you put on each of these? I only get thirty bucks for them. I think that's cheap for the amount of time and effort that goes into them. I don't feel at all uncomfortable charging thirty bucks for them. Uh, Christmas novel ribbons. They're only available at Christmas time from Michael's. Uh, but I think it finishes up nice. The ladies like them, they call them cute. And I take the 30 bucks and I say, that's nice. <laughs> yeah, 
the guys won't buy these things, but their wives will. And, uh, and that's how I make my angels. I have them three or four different sizes. And sometimes I'll put a family together for uh, a family of four for a hundred bucks or whatever. And they go over well. Thanks, Any questions?